want to start with you, Mr. Baby, because it is your job to maintain law and order. A rally is allowed of the Jamate Islami's youth wing where they have a Hamas leader online, the Solidarity Youth Movement, saying they want to uproot Hindutva and apartheid Zionism. Now, how can you allow then Hamas to participate in a rally at a time like this when there are serious questions over the way Hamas has launched terror attacks in Israel? All of this is seen to build a certain radicalization within the Muslim community and the Kerala government is being accused of turning a blind eye to it. That allegation that Kerala government is turning a blind eye towards any extremist activity, it is totally unfounded. Kerala government is taking all possible steps to ensure that terrorist forces, extremist forces are not able to influence people and incite them into terrorist activities. No, so why the was this, why was this rally allowed? To, why was yes. a rally involving a Hamas leader allowed? Yeah, you see, first of all, I don't know this, uh, the state of Kerala, legally working organizations are having full freedom to organize programs in solidarity with Palestine or with any other you know, liberation movement. Mm -hmm. I don't think they might have mentioned that we are going to have the message of Hamas leader would be played. I don't know whether it was a recorded message which was played or it is an online, you know, conversation or address. How do you, anyway, but, I, but doesn't it worry the Kerala government that this can be, this Hamas. can be used? You're saying freedom of speech. You're claiming freedom of speech that is respected by the Kerala government and therefore you have allowed it. Am I correct? That's the stand of the Kerala government, that this falls within free speech. You see, we have to see what, what was the content of his speech. It is only speculation and hearsay. Then Kerala government would definitely investigate whether there was any uh, statement inciting violence or extremist activity was there in the speech, in the recorded speech of the Hamas leader. Now Hamas is not a banned organization. That also we should understand. I, you know, I, I, I've taken your point, Mr. Baby, but let me for a moment bring in Mr. Punawala because Mr. Punawala, look at how it plays out. This rally takes place. The next day, on Sunday, when there is a blast at a Jehovah's Witness gathering on a Sunday morning, immediately the BJP goes into overdrive and seems to draw a link between the rally where the Hamas leader was online and what happened the next day. When the reality is, it turns out to be someone called Dominic Martins. Now, this is part of the problem. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, your leader, jumps the gun and immediately draws a link. You seem to be also fishing in troubled waters. Rajdeep, thank you very much. First of all, Rajiv Chandrasekhar did not jump any gun. In fact, I remember his statement verbatim. Mm -hmm. He said that what is happening in Kerala is the platformization of radical elements. Mm -hmm. And there has been, you said, seems to draw a link. If you have definitive statement that we have concluded both to be one after the other, then you please provide that. He but says the blasts have taken together, place just 24 hours after the Hamas said, leader speech. And Congress left are indulging in appeasement politics. What is the connection between the Jehovah's Witness blast and what the Are Hamas rally? He seemed to suggest there's a Muslim group behind it without doing any Mr. investigation. Rajeev, now, Mr. Rajdeep, you will have to hear me out as well. Again, I'm saying Rajiv Chandrasekhar stated two facts. One, that a Hamas leader was given a platform where the agenda was also uproot, Hindutva, etc. Mm -hmm. And that is a truism. Secondly, the blast took place within 24 hours of that. That is also a truism. In fact, you must ask Rajdeep that if they do believe that whatever has happened by jamaat e islami is indeed not correct, has the Kerala police taken any action on jamaat e islami till now? Point number two, 
isn't it the true fact now he says that hamas is not banned let me give him some other examples mr baby pfi was banned when was omar salam who was given a job in ksab removed from uh, P from the de job that he had in the government department why wasn't he removed when the kerala police himself had arrested him in 2020 for anti national activities from 2020 to 2023 why was this man who was with pfi who your police arrested for anti national activities not kicked out of ksab chalo forget that elathur rain attack uh, train attack took place immediately the ig immediately says that sharuk saifi is a person who's mentally unstable thereafter the nia steps in and thereafter the kerala police and the sit acknowledge that he was a highly radicalized individual who was walking who was mm. watching zakir naik's videos leave that also aside now let me come to two three facts that i need to state about what has happened in kerala first of all here is a statement of mr ma baby and i accept uh, i hope rajdeep you will ask him this has been published on 9th october in times of india ma baby when asked about the attack by hamas says israel is a terrorist country the hamas attack is only a retaliation to what israel has done earlier if you are labeling hamas a terrorist organization then you have to accept israel is also a terrorist country this is ma baby's quoted statement then let me also quote to you what mr swaraj has said who is a cpim leader this is when shashi tharoor on an iuml platform calls out hamas for terrorism mr swaraj says tharoor has shown solidarity with is israel and he slams tharoor and says israel is a terrorist state then mr munir who's also on our show together he goes ahead and says the british used to call our freedom fighters like mr azad and bhagat singh as terrorists resistance in gaza is being labeled as terrorism when somebody will go for genocide those who are hurling pebbles are now using more vigorous means to resist and therefore this is not called a terrorism this is the statement of mr munir can Let i please mr. ask mr munir will if mr munir no no mr punawala mr punawala actions of 7th of october mr punawala or are there resistance okay. and are there actions that are justifiable okay let let mr munir respond please ask them this yes first. i will certainly ask, ask them i will just mr. Munir, mr. Mr. mr punawala you cannot hijack the show you, you cannot hijack the show they have every right to respond to you hmm. let mr munir respond mr munir Now yeah. also three Mr. Mr. Munir, no, so sir, please put down this volume. Mr. Munir, very clearly, as Mr. Punawala is suggesting, you had a meeting where Shashi Tharoor speaks out against the Hamas, says Hamas has resorted to terror. You then draw, as per uh, the statements that have come out, an equivalence between what Hamas did and a freedom fight, a fight for resistance. Are you saying that Hamas is not a terrorist group? This is a resistance group. effectively justifying what happened on october 7 and thereby allowing israel politics israel gaza uh, palestine politics to play out in kerala in ways that are potentially dangerous first of all i would like to say that uh, my uh, speech was not a reply to shashi tharoor mm -hmm. shashi tharoor has said whatever uh, he has the freedom to talk about uh, his views on our stage he should not be aligned to the policies of our political party organization and i was not talking about any organization mm -hmm. i was talking about palestinians who were resisting themselves how and do you see hamas no, mr munir what no, is no, I am so how do you see hamas i do you make a distinction between hamas and the palestinian struggle you you can uh, look into uh, you can hear my speech once more i have never mentioned about any organizations i was mentioning about the palestinians the children they say that they are praying not five times six times they are also praying for their uh, a, a eternal peace for their children mm -hmm. so uh, this is not an incident which has happened on uh, from october this is there since decades do you condemn do you condemn unequivocally what happened on october 7 sir no i say that we should look into all the all the incidents started starting from uh, a, a century that is decades so Gaza you don't condemn had... unequivocally what happened on the 7 sir on 7 We, 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 any innocent people, especially the, if the civilians mm -hmm. are attacked, mm -hmm. it is against international law. International law, under international law, it is punishable. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It is a crime. But I would like to say that what Israel has done in uh, uh, retaliation to this is mm -hmm. about 7,000, uh, out of 7,000, 4,000 are children. Are, are they uh, members of Hamas? Okay, so you're saying your focus is on the are Israeli they, attacks in Gaza, which you also believe is a war crime. You, you made what? your point. Let, let me just yeah, every, for... Every, everybody is keeping quiet when uh, 7,000 people, innocent people, civilians are killed. Okay. And still you want to say that Palestinians are the real terrorists? Okay. And Israel are just a, a country who is defending themselves? Okay, you made your point, Munir. I'll come back to you in a moment. But Lavanya Balal, while this is happening, the Congress party, let's get this very clear. You are also being accused by the BJP along with the left of appeasement politics. Do you really see that the role of the Congress party at the moment in Kerala? Or is the Congress unequivocally condemning both Hamas as well as the attacks that are taking place in Gaza and the killing of civilians there? Good evening, uh, Rajdeep. I think our party has made it very clear about our point of view about Palestine, about Hamas, and about the war that is going on uh, in uh, the Gaza and uh, the nation. And we stand by the nation when it says we recognize Palestine's right to be an independent nation. And also, of course, uh, we have. Do you support the idea if a group? No. Do you support the idea if there is a group in uh, in Kerala which organizes a rally where a Hamas leader speaks online? Do you support that, or do you believe that rally should have not been allowed to take place? Um. Rajdeep, I think it is their right to have a rally, but to have a former Hamas leader at the rally, the question is, was it necessary to have this particular leader address this gathering in Kerala? That's very important. But everybody is making accusations about, uh, you know, Congress party. I think it is the norm for the BJP. No, to no, drag no, no, no. Please Congress answer my question. I asked thing. you a direct question. I'll give me a direct answer. Yes, do, you, Rajdeep, do you believe the rally should have been allowed or not? A rally where a Hamas leader was speaking at the moment, do you believe it should have been allowed or not? The question is, did we need a Hamas leader to address the rally? Uh, Rajdeep, a rally is every Indian is a fundamental right to hold. But the question is, did we need a Hamas uh, leader mm -hmm. to address this rally at this point of time? But let me make it very clear, uh, Rajdeep, December 2022, the uh, Nikhil and the Rai, the uh, Minister of State for Home Affairs said, there have been 2,900 incidents of communal violence in India in the last five years, and none of them have been in Kerala. Well, we are jumping to uh, you know, declare that Kerala is a tinderbox. Kerala is becoming communally sensitive. Let's also be very clear, there have been no uh, communal violence in the state in the last five and a half years. And most of the communal violence incidents have happened in the Hindi speaking states, especially in the BJP ruled states. Also, I would like to ask the BJP counterparts, you know, uh, when they talk about uh, the terror hub, the question is who uh, or who decides what amounts to terror hubs in India? Uh, and also, why did the if if the BJP is so concerned about this nation, why did the BJP MP and its troll army go out of its way when the uh, blast happened in Kerala to claim that it was the Hamas supported okay. Muslim I, I, I take your last Muslims point. of India? I take your last yeah. point, and Mr. Punawala, before I go to MA, baby, you must answer that. You cannot get away by saying that Rajiv Chandrasekhar did yes. not jump the gun. The fact is, he did. Let's be clear. I've seen all his statements. Rajiv Chandrasekhar drew a link between what has turned out possibly to be an attack, a, a terror blast, unfortunate by someone called Dominic Martins, and gave the impression, along with a lot of your social media warriors, that Muslim groups were behind it. This is dangerous. You are in government. Where is the responsibility? Even before an NIA investigation, you are concluding a link between the blast and Hamas. I mean, instead of coming on this program, you should be de and defending the indefensible. Rajdeep. Why not accept that you jump the gun? Rajdeep, jumping the gun is when the Elathur attack took place, the IG is on record to say that No, no, Mr. please answer Shahrukh my question. I'm not interested in Elathur. I am not interested in Elathur, sir. 
I am interested in what happened second. yesterday. Oh, you're Mr. not interested Shazad anymore. Kunawala, I will Rajdeep, not allow not you to in what finish the says. You must have, I will the, answer, you must have the ability I will to answer, accept you made a mistake. I will answer. It's have one the ability three. to accept you made it a mistake. It is one versus three. Give me my opportunity There is to no answer. one versus three. I want an answer. I will. No, we have not made any mistake because it is one versus three. The panel can be seen. And Rajdeep, I hope you will at least have the patience for 30 seconds. No, I want you I to am answer my question. I categorically saying, tell me where in which state. Yes, you have to stop interrupting, but. Rajdeep, why don't you read out the full statement of Rajiv Chandrasekhar rather than putting your spin or interpretation on it? Rajiv Chandrasekhar has stated two facts that took place within a space of 24 hours, which even I am stating on your show. It doesn't mean we have drawn a link. It means that we are showing that there is an open air and open season for radicalization. And by the way, Rajdeep, were you so angry when the IG of Kerala says that the Elathur attack within moments is a mentally unstable person and later on his own SIT has to acknowledge that we were wrong on this and in fact it was a person radicalized by Zakir Naik. Mm -hmm. At that time, have you asked Kerala government why they were busy whitewashing Shah Rukh Saifi's actions? Anyways, leave that aside. Rajdeep, did you see the reluctance of Lavanya Balal, the Congress party, to call out what is clearly an act of radicalization and she says that, oh, what was the need of having a Hamas leader? It could have been done without Hamas leader also. Today, Sonia Gandhi has written an article in The Hindu. In that article, not one place, Rajdeep, has she called what Hamas has done as a terrorist action. In fact, the abstention that has been done in the United Nations resolution, because we wanted Hamas's actions to be called out Rajdeep. as a terrorist action, and the release of the Rajdeep. hostages has been opposed by the Congress. So the Congress is actually in the favor of Hamas keeping hostages. But apart from that, more importantly, Rajdeep, please one more time, one more opportunity. Now you have Mr. Munir denying his statement, saying that go hear my speech, etc. Forget him. M.A. Baby is clearly, I have a statement here and Mr. M.A. Baby says, if you are labeling Hamas a terrorist That's organization, me. you have to accept Israel as a terrorist country. The Hamas attack is a retaliation of what Israel has done earlier. This is justification of the 7th October actions. Okay. Can you please Ma ask Mr. 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 Punawala, from Mr. Punawala, Punawala you made your point. Who let, uh, let Mr. M. A. Baby, who is a senior Hamas leader, respond. Mr. Punawala, you must allow others to speak. You must allow others to speak. Mr. M. A. Baby, Mr. Punawala has twice repeated this. And the general impression, therefore, he and others are giving is that Kerala is being soft on radicalization, particularly Islamic radicalization in your state. If groups like the Jamaat organize rallies where Hamas leaders are present, surely it can lead to radicalization. In the past, also the Popular Front of India has been accused of holding rallies that are seen to only divide communities. While you attack Hindutva forces, Islamist forces will also therefore come under the scanner. Mr. Baby, your response. You see, uh, uh, my friend Mr. Rajdeep, first of all, I have to respond about your very pointed question, very reasonable question of uh, Mr. Raju Chandrasekhar uh, having stated something which has nothing to do with the ground reality. It may be a sheer coincidence that today, 30th October, happens to be the uh, 200th anniversary of the publication of a very interesting book, Sense and Sensibility, by Jane Austen. Uh, which only relevance of the title of the book here is that Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar did not display any sense or sensibility, neither the responsibility of a union government. Without ascertaining the facts, he made an allegation in a, in a bad taste. This is all I would like to state. No, no, he may have made an allegation. No, no, his detail. allegation we've dealt without with, Mr. Punawala. I am asking you the no. allegations against your government that your government has not done enough to stop a certain radicalization that is taking place in the state to get your police to act firmly against any action that could lead to law and order disturbances, including possibly the speech of a Hamas leader at a rally. Already my Congress friend has stated the statistics, the number, number of communal clashes that have taken place whether any serious communal problem had happened in Kerala. These facts are there before the people. Now, I have already replied about this meeting organized by Solidarity. Who knew that these people are there uh, going to leave an online speech? Now, let, let us come to the direct question, what is Hamas? 
it is a very very calculated move to bring the entire discourse and narrative around hamas we should know that hamas is now the elected uh, representatives of gaza region they were part of the palestinian liberation movement they are the most influential organization there my party has differences about the approach of hamas but hamas is one of the militant streams do you condemn the does your party unequivocally condemn what Japan. happened on october 7 sir unequivocally very good mr rajiv you know you know what un secretary general mr gutter has said october 7th did not happen in a vacuum i stated in the so called uh, oft quoted misquoted and misinterpreted statement of mine what did i say in this year 2023 248 palestinians have been killed by the zionist semi fascist rajai under netanyahu of this 248 this is before 7th october in the year 2023 of the 248 palestinians killed there were 40 children nobody speaks about that it was as stated by me as the reaction to that when they they were driven the palestinians were driven to the wall mm -hmm. they reacted in a manner which i am not approving but that reaction is not from a vacuum that we so you remember. claim Now you claim you are echoing what the un secretary general guter has said over. okay you you made your point but that mr munir the mr munir the danger Rajdeep. is that in some parts of your state rajiv rajiv one second no no one, one minute second. sir one minute mr Rajdeep punawala mr munir no seconds. no no mr Rajdeep munir must just no i beseech you i will let you get seconds. your 30 seconds i am actually extending it and dropping some other discussion for it no, no, but mr no no rajiv i beseech you it has to happen now i beseech you no nothing has to happen now nothing has to happen now you will be given a chance to respond mr munir please put his hands down voice down mr munir i heard just now from ma baby that he believes october 7 did not take place in a vacuum is that what the muslim league is saying does the muslim league support the jamaat e islam no no one minute the solidarity movement organizing a meeting with hamas leaders there will it not lead to the radicalization of the community on this issue is that something you want we have nothing to do with the solidarity you have nothing uh, to muslim, do with them no I, we have nothing to do with solidarity it is an uh, uh, another organization with another ideology uh, my organization you know we have stood against all the radical organization in this in this state we fought uh, uh, this popular front we fought a uh, stpi we are we are always against the ideology of all these radical organizations but here this is as uh, maybe we have said un secretary general has made a statement and do you think that un secretary general is a radical can you uh, label him as a radical the U united nations has not mentioned about hamas and in india has said you should mention about hamas also so for that reason is united nations organization is a radical organization so you so, also are echoing what mr guterres is saying that the violence of october 7 did not take place in a vacuum so you and yes. ma baby in a sense are echoing a similar point now shahzad punawala take your 30 seconds this is not an incident which has started from october Please. okay rajdeep uh, no, 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 thank you very much in, on this show Rajdeep. we don't have cross talk lavanya palal now we days we are not able to talk about palestine there is an embassy Rajdeep. of palestine Rajdeep. Rajdeep. so why don't you say that palestine rajdeep it was my opportunity one minute shahzad punawala it is my chance to speak you must listen to the question Both Mr. Munir and M. A. Baby are very clear. They are echoing yeah. what the no, UN no, Secretary no, General said. Just, just a minute. Ask me. They are I echoing. They say what the UN Secretary General yeah. said. What is the problem with that? They are entitled as free speech to stand up for Palestinian rights. If your government or you don't want to stand up for that, that's your line, and that's actually not what India's government line has been over the years. Rajdeep, now I please request you to give me just thirty-five seconds uninterrupted. 
since they are quoting the UN Secre United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Guterres. First of all, Mr. Guterres has come out publicly, and this is there even on India Today and all publications. UN Chief, I am shocked by the misrepresentations of my Middle Eastern remarks. He has totally rejected that he has made this kind of justification. But having said that, please let me tell you, Rajdeep, that Mr. M.A. Baby's statement is on 9th of October, and Mr. Guterres's first statement, which he then claims was misinterpreted, was much later. And by 9th October, Palestine was not being hammered, as they are saying, by Israel. And at that point of time, Mr. M.A. Baby called Israel a terrorist country and went on to say that if uh, Hamas is a, terrorist, uh, is a That's terrorist his view. That's his view. Is he not entitled? So is Israel. Mr. And his attack is one second. Is he not his attack is a retaliation. One second. Do not interrupt. Now, do not tell me not to interrupt. One is second. That not now, let view? me come to his view. He's entitled let me come to his view. view. Let me come to his view. Do not, yes, I'm coming to that view. Let me come to that also. By the way, Rajdeep, these people who take one stand in Kerala and come and take another stand here, if Mr. Baby was indeed yeah. okay with calling Hamas out for its terror actions of 7th of October, their colleague K.K. Shailaja had tweeted Hamas is a terrorist organization. She was forced to remove that tweet or Facebook post because Mr. K.T. Jalil says that you cannot call uh, Hamas and uh, a terrorist I... organization. Israelis are actually dreaded terrorists. Now okay. when it